Hi everyone, you're with Lucy from Art Shed Angel and today I'm going to show you how to make this fun little pocket project using watercolours and watercolour pencils. So let's get started. So today we're going to make this lovely little pocket and if you like this please make sure you subscribe to my page. The link is below where you can find the, uh, um, the template for this project. So we're going to make a pocket today with this lovely girl's face on it. It's going to be a little bit different. This is the actual one I made before but what I'm going to do is use watercolour pencils and also some watercolours to colour this. So I am using watercolour paper to create it and we're going to be drawing on that and I'm going to do a little demo of how to do a face. So the first thing you need to do is cut yourself the template. So I have used watercolour paper and you can see that bottom fold there. You can either leave that there or not and you'll see that as I get to the end of this project. I have made it so you can use this for um, putting into a journal and sticking it into a journal as well. So I'm using my bone scorer just to score it to make sure that I get nice folds and it is 300 GSM or 140 pound watercolour paper that I'm using. Just making sure that all these little things are folding properly before I start. Now that one of those flaps will be cut off only because we are not making this into something for a junk journal. If you leave the flap on, just like the one with the flower there, you can put holes in it and you can put it into the spine of your junk journal. So the next thing we're going to do is add a face. Now I'm using watercolours. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a face, but we're only going to use half a face. But before we start it, do make sure you fold that flap down so you draw over the top of it. But I'm going to get you to do a little drawing first. So draw an egg shape upside down. Divide it halfway along the horizontal and halfway along the vertical. And then to place the eyes, you can see there that I have my eyes the width of an eye apart. So you can see the two lines there that I've got. Make the eye an eye apart. Now from that line that the eyes are, I do a mark halfway down. That's for the nose. So that's halfway down. Then halfway in the bottom section, I also do a line where the mouth is. So it's a bit of calculations. You can use a ruler if you like. Now with my eyes, I draw a straight line first and then a curve. And then the bottom of the eye is not quite as curved. There's also a template of this if you don't want to draw it yourself. The nose is three balls. And we're using the larger ball and the two smaller balls either side. They are not staying there. We're going to rub most of that out. And we are going to make sure that those nostrils are just where the two balls start. Now you can see there I have rubbed out that heavy line beside the nose. Noses don't have heavy lines. And the eyebrows are approximately an eye above. So when you drew an eyebrow, don't put them really high. Um, you can if someone's looking surprised. But in this case, the person's just looking forward. So their eyebrow is approximately an eye apart. So you can see here I'm now rubbing out some of those lines because we don't need heavy lines there. Now when it comes to the iris and the pupil, we really need to make a, have a look at what we're doing. So I always sit the iris on top of the bottom lid and then you've just got to imagine that being a whole ball. So I'm just there drawing it in lightly for you. So that's the whole iris because part of it sits underneath your eyelid, just rubbing it out so that we don't use it. The pupil must sit in the middle of that iris. So when we do, it's good to do a little light sketch of that so that when we put the pupil in, we make sure that sure the pupil is not in the middle of the actual eye space, but in the middle of the iris. I don't know if that makes sense, but when you start drawing, it does. 
So you can see here, it just looks right because an iris works like a camera lens and we really need to make sure that we get the iris in the right, uh, iris and the pupil in the right places. So now I've got her up to that stage, I'm just going to use my pen. I haven't done her mouth yet, but I'm just going to use my pen just to show you the difference it makes. So when you get to this stage, you might sometimes look at it and go, oh, she doesn't look real yet or the person doesn't look real. We really need to get that black section in the pupil and make sure that you leave a nice big highlight in that pupil. Sometimes two dots is nice or a, a larger dot and a smaller dot that is the reflection of the light. So sometimes you'll see it'll be square like a reflection of a window or something like that. So you can see there we have a lovely proportioned eye and we just do the other eye the same way. And eyebrows, I'm just using my pen to do sort of rough lines in the shape of an eyebrow. Now when we start to shade our girl later, we need to think about the fact that her eyes are in a socket. And here with the nostrils, I'm just using my pen just to enhance the bits that I actually want to see. We don't want to see that whole nose. That's just a change in planes on her face. So when I get to the mouth, I'm going to um, put a little bit of a curve because I want to start off with the middle part of your mouth is actually what smiles. So you can see by curving that upwards, we immediately get a smile and it even brightens her eyes, which I think is quite exciting. Now I've done that little um, part behind, between the nose and the mouth and then I've t taken that the mouth down in a curve. Now the bottom lip is just a curve. It's not shaped like that top lip. So always be really aware of that. And we always have a bit of shading under the mouth where the lip puts a shadow onto the chin before the chin starts to jut out again. So you can see there we're having her starting to look like a real girl. The nose, you can see here, I'm shading it in, but I'm not actually doing it as a hard line. It's just one of my things that I just don't like that hard line. So again, here I am starting to do it quickly and just drawing the face on just like I did there, but this time we're only doing a half one. So you would leave a half an eye space from, this, from the edge of your page to where you're gonna draw the eye. So drawing half of something can sometimes be a little bit challenging. So if you don't want to draw half of her, you could just draw a face and fold it in half and just trace it on. So you can see here I'm being very, very careful to make sure I have the right amount of space between the eye and the middle of the, or the bridge of the nose. Again, making sure that I'm getting that iris with the pupil in the center and shaping her face a little bit. You can add a little bit more shape to her face. And I'm gonna do rainbow hair on this girl. So I'm just doing some really rough curls using um, my pencil. And you can see there, I'm doing it over the flap of the actual little envelope as well, because we're gonna color both the inside and the outside, which is gonna be really nice. So using my watercolor pencils. Now, for those of you who've never used watercolor pencils, watercolor pencils are just great for coloring in and then wetting them down to get the, you know, very quick color stuff happening. So you can use your watercolors here as well, but you can see here I've done um, a bit of a rainbow and I'm just going from one color into the next using the watercolor pencils. Well, just been looking for that red pencil. So you can see here, I'm going then into the red and from the red, I'm going to the dark blue and then the light blue. And I am doing this very, very quickly. I'm not using any skill at all in how I'm coloring in. And that's the great thing about watercolor pencils. There's really no skill in that coloring part at all. It's when you start to wet it down that it makes a huge difference 
if you don't get that right. So here again, I'm just doing the face and I'm using one of my pencils that's a kind of a flesh color, looks really rough at this stage. Even her, like a little bit of rouge on her cheek, I'm doing that as well now. And then what I'm doing is I'm going to get my water brush and you can see here with my water brush, I'm just wetting the area and spreading it around. Now, if you, you can use either a water brush or a normal brush. I have that toilet roll there, which I can wipe my brush off so that I don't contaminate the next section that I paint. And this is going to be more important when we get to painting the actual hair because I really want to make sure that I get it even. So you can see there I'm getting it as even as possible. Now I'm going from the bright yellow into then the orange. So it's okay from to go from the yellow into the orange, but you wouldn't go from the orange into the yellow because you would end up with contamination. So remember that that brush is picking up the color that you're using. So here, when I get to the blue, you can see there how much paint is on the brush. When I get to the blue, I've given my brush a good wipe over on that toilet roll. So that's a toilet roll wrapped over the top, um, some paper towel wrapped over the top of a toilet roll, which is one of my favorite, favorite tools. And you can see here, I've just got that all wet down. It looks completely different than it did with just the coloring. So with the eye, I'm going to use light green first, and then I'm adding a little bit of a turquoise under the eyelid. So an eyelid gives you a shadow onto your eye. So I always do under the eyelid slightly darker. And here I'm just wetting it down enough for it to bleed, but not brushing the dark into the light. Because if I brush the dark into the light, I don't have my light green anymore. So it's really important when you're doing this, especially with watercolor pencils, to make sure that you think about, am I going to spread the color where I don't want it to go? And the same thing I've done here, I've, I'm now adding a little bit of the dark and I'm really being thoughtful about where I spread that. So I'm gonna color in the background as well. And I'm going to use quite a dark color. So this is like a midnight blue because I want her bright hair to really stand out. So the other thing to think about when you're doing artwork is, are you thinking enough about contrast? So if I want something to really stand out, I might do a really dark background so that it stands forward. So here you can see here, as soon as I wet it with my brush, it just looks lovely the the beautiful deep blue that I have there so I have sped this up as you would have noticed but it is very very quick to do this process and you know sometimes if you need to dry it in between so that you don't put your fingers over it just make sure you give it a quick dry so the next thing I'm going to do is use my lines to actually put some lines over the top of the face and give some detail. The first thing I'm doing here is drying it, of course, and it is important to dry in between. Now I'm using a UniPin um, waterproof marker here, and they are great because you can draw underneath or over the top, or you can paint over the top of them as well. And I'm just going through and outlining all those areas and you can see how by outlining these areas it, it's really bringing the picture up so all that coloring you've done now you're finishing it off with these little lines now you can also add some highlights into the green you can see that there so it looks like there's some light coming into people's eyes I always believe happy eyes are those eyes that have a bit of light don't forget your eye um, eyelids. And when I do eyelashes, I always turn my work upside down and I draw towards myself. And I don't ever put too many eyelashes because I think that you can overdo it with too many eyelashes. So here now I'm just adding some bits and pieces of detail into the hair and that just helps outline it all. 
So the rest of this video, I'm really just finishing off with my pens. I'm also going to be using a white pencil, a white pen, sorry, I use a Signo Broad. I'm going to make sure that I have other areas painted and I'm just looking at what color would look nice on the inside of the flap from the um, envelope. And I think I'd like to use some gold. I'm a bit of a lover of gold and I think with all these pretty colors the gold looks really nice and I would use that gold on the back of the envelope as well. So I always look at my artwork and think how can I how can I do more to it and I've just used a darker blue pencil now to make a darker area around the hair because that again makes it stand out more and it's a really nice midnighty blue that I'm going to add some lines and stars and stuff on with my Signo Broad pen. So you know I've just had to dry it off because it's hard to write on with a Signo when your work is still wet. So make sure your work is dry. I'm going to use the Signo Broad. I'm just while that's drying I'm just going to use these beautiful shimmer drops and add a bit of shimmer to my blue. So I always love metallics and these new shimmer um, drops paints that are made in Australia are really, really a bit of fun. So I'm using the shimmer drops paint to add some color and just a bit of glimmer to it. And make sure you dry that off because if you're gonna use your Signo Broad, you wanna make sure it's nice and dry. And that gives a little bit of a starry night effect that I'm putting behind there. So just a dot with a little circle around it. I love texture, it's mark making, it's making it a little bit more interesting by just adding something to the picture. And I'm also going to add these little dots up in through the hair because I find that they give it a little bit of rhythm. So when you're doing your artwork, have a look at what gives you a little bit of rhythm and it makes it a little bit more interesting. So, you know, um, dots like this do. I always like to, um, one of the things I really like to do is use dots to make people's eye go around the page. So here I've just added dots in all the colors and that just enhances it. So you can see here we've got it all coming together. Make sure you do close that lid and that way you can add those dots there as well as you can see on the lid as well. And that way when somebody opens it there's that little surprise behind. You can see there I've got um, one that I've done earlier with flowers. So you, need, you can stick it together now and I'm cutting that flap off because I just want it to be a plain envelope and you can see that one there has that little extra bit. So the template that, you, that I've created has that extra bit so if you want to put it in your junk journal. Now these are all the finishing touches that I'm going to do and I might just speed this up a little bit further so that you can see the finishing touches that I do. So there you go, I've created some pockets using um, this 
technique and I've used some of the shimmer drops paints over the top and these can be put onto, um, onto the fridge with a magnet. You could put a ticket for somebody. These Shimmer Drops paints are made in Australia and they're really, really great quality. I'll put the link in the description below. So these are my little dolls, my Russian dolls, which Jolene um, Payne from Live Art Journaling and Self-Development showed me. And I'm also going to be creating a video using those. So so if you want a copy of the template, head over to Live Art Journaling and Self-Development. Um, the link will be in the description below and just have a look at what we've got there to offer. So I hope you enjoyed the video and you give this a go. Now, everything that you want for the video will be in the description. You're with Lucy and I hope you enjoyed this. Make sure you subscribe and I hope to talk to you again soon. Mm -hmm.